just going to be on boiling up some frames. Um, frames I've cut the old comb out of. They've had a soak getting the stickiness off them. Now it's time to sterilise them. I use an old header tank, came out of a loft. And there are two Burko boiler type elements in there. That bit of pipe with the tap ons just to drain the tank down to empty it at the end. Because those heating elements are 3 kilowatt, they need to be supplied individually from separate sockets, preferably on a separate ring on separate ring mains. Because they only do this job once a year, I sometimes forget the finer details. Just trying to fill the tank up with the horse pipe. It takes me a while before I remember it's far easier to take that nozzle off and just let it run in from the horse pipe itself. I'll get there eventually. Yes, that's better. Far less hassle that way. I also just like to check the drain is working, not blocked, before it gets full of hot water. Yeah, that's fine. It's just warming up now. The iron is get the frame washed off in there, washing soda solution. Rinse them off in there, stack away down the shed to dry. It's just a lot handier to have the washing soda in 25 kilogram bags rather than buying the kilogram bags at the supermarket. The black mark on the jug, that's the level for uh, about a kilogram of washing soda. I'm not sure of the capacity of that tank that I'm boiling the water in. I would guess it's 15 or 20 gallons perhaps. Uh, but from experience, I know to put about eight kilograms of soda in there. Uh, that'll do the job. Some of the frames that are to boil up are stacked loose on pallets, whilst others are in boxes. The bubble wrap around the tank, that's just there as a bit of insulation. I wear a pair of thin uh, vinyl gloves underneath the thicker rubber ones. Just helps protect my hands from the heat. I've got rid of most of the wax and propolis off the frames when I cut the comb out. The more I can get off then, the more frames I can do at each boil up. With these British standard frames, the worst places are the propolis underneath the lugs and uh, wax and propolis stuck in the grooves of the frame down the sides. I like to do a full box of frames at each load. That's 11 of the British standard Smith frames going in. I put them in and keep giving them a bit of a plunge. The blue tank on the left has the horse pipe in it and it's running continuously, slowly. Just keep uh, refreshing the water in there. Sometimes use a frame to plunge them under and hold them under for a while. Takes a bit of getting going, but once you're going, it's all right. The system works fairly well. And then I try to take frames, pull frames out from underneath, give them a quick swill off, swirl about in the water and drop them in the plunge tank. Just take a closer look at them as I'm taking them out of the tank. Grooves are, are clean there, no problem with that. Split bottom bars okay. And then uh, the other places under the lugs. Yeah, propolis is off there. I'm happy with them, they'll be okay. It's another one of them jobs where you, uh, you just get on with it really. You kind of go into a world of your own. A bit therapeutic at times. Am I convincing you? With the last one of that batch done and into the rinse off tank, I load it again. Get another 11 in. And then I'll uh, plunge those in the swill off tank off and take them away to be stacked. Give those a bit of a posse off. Gather them up. Take them away. Another 11 done. As a matter of safety, both boiler rings are run through RCDs. That one's on a socket near the tank. The other one's run through an extension cable which is fully unwound to prevent overheating. 
As more and more frames are put through, the level of water in the boiling tank reduces and the effectiveness of the washing soda diminishes. At that point, we have to pack up and drain the tank down. You can see here how stuff's been left in the, uh, in the groove. So that's it. We need to start again. Also there under the lug, properly coating that lug. Yeah. That batch has had it. Time to restart. I can just finish them last uh, three off by using a brush and a good possing. I've been able to do all those out of that uh, one batch. Uh, 32 boxes worth. 32 11s. 350 odd frames so and I've done that in in about a half a day um, it's about an hour and a half from putting the water in to getting the tank up to temperature and then a couple of hours of washing down so yeah 350 frames ready for reuse does it pay to do this I honestly don't know drain the tank down quick swill out start again get another batch done do about 700 frames a day Right, enough of all that steam and stink. Time to get the mouse guards off. Just simply take the pins out, drop them in the tray. Mouse guards all get gathered up and taken back to base. I do like to give them all a wash off as well. Some of them are alright, they're not too bad, but others are, are quite spotted up. And uh, I think for what it takes to clean them, it's, it's well worth it. Nice to see bees flying whilst I'm doing this job. That's always a welcome sight. Yep, and the grass is starting to grow again. Got to keep the entrances clear. I'm just at that site that's been flooded and um, these colonies didn't get vaporized with oxalic acid, the apibioxal. Um, because of the flood, I couldn't use the generator. So instead, I've had to give them Apivar strips. And the Apivar strips have been in about three weeks now. Minimum length of treatment for those strips is six weeks. So these colonies have another three weeks to go before the strips come out. And until those strips come out, we're not allowed to put honey boxes, the supers, on. So I'm a bit concerned they're getting a bit strong. And I have to hold these back for two and a half to three weeks uh, before I can put any honey boxes on. So what I propose to do is take a couple of combs out and drop a couple of uh, frames in with sheets of foundation in, just to hold them back. Just over that hedge behind me, there's oilseed rape just coming into flower. Uh, I don't know if it's a hybrid variety or conventional, but if it's conventional and they start to work that, they could soon uh, need more space and start to draw comb. I don't want that comb in the roof. in there. So that's, that's that side of that brood nest. So yeah, I'm not checking every 
frame from the scorm. Just purely want to get a couple of sheets of foundation into them just to delay them a bit. Back in. The job I've got to do while I'm here is move that. I thought that the best place for a hornet trap for trapping queen hornets Asian hornets in the in this in the spring would be uh, as close to the hives as possible apparently not yet yeah, it wants to be among the hives close to them in the midsummer when we're trying to trap the worker hornets but not the queens no it wants to be away from the hives so uh, and I've been told uh, perhaps three or four hundred meters away if possible three or four hundred yards but yeah, I did get this wrong, and thanks for Colin for uh, advising me. Uh, I'm always glad of any comments, any... If you think I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Let me know. Um, yeah. Feedback appreciated. So there we are, re hornet trap. Uh, yeah, I just assumed they'd be better off close to the hives, but... Not the case. Uh, another reason why I wanted to keep it close to hives is it's more secure really. Joe Public wanders about all over and I think they're less likely to get to the trap if it's amongst the hives. But uh, yeah, so the, the trap's here and the bees are in the distance there. You can see them there. Far side of the wheelbarrow, through that bush. I would guess that's maybe 80 or 90 yards. Uh, I think further would be more, would be better, but it's where do you go? Uh, to put it along that hedge line, as I was first going to, there are one or two people walk along there. And uh, I know, if there's one thing, when people see a trap, if there's one thing they want to do, they either want to break it, release the occupants, or just take it away. So, anyway, hopefully it'll be all right there. I don't know if that's going to help, I'll just put ideas in somebody's head really. It's only as I watch this back that I realise to my horror I haven't spelt please correctly. Honestly. Thanks for watching and if you found that of interest please click like and subscribe. Bye for now from Swales Honey in North Yorkshire.